Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Hellblade 2. We're going to start by uh, optimizing Windows. After that, I'm going to show you how to swap your DLSS version if you want to use DLSS. So you're going to have the latest DLSS version for the game. And after that, we're going to optimize the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a, a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for example, here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people <laughs> are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. 
um, on a de desktop computer it should not be an issue but if you're playing on a laptop really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU um it's it's pretty amazing honestly um it will help if you don't have a lot of ram in your pc so if you have 4 gig of ram 8 gig 12 gig uh, after that you should be fine windows is doing the job properly so it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list so what i recommend normally it's look at your total memory here in my case it's 32 just divided by two so for me it's 16 just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal depending on your component, but it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So just before uh, launching the game, if, you, uh, if you're gonna use the DLSS, uh, I recommend to use the LSS swapper because by default the game used 3.5.10. So you wanna use the 3.7 version, so the latest version. So you need to do that before booting your game. And when you did that, you just have to boot it and you're going to use the latest one. So now inside of the game. So the first one is your display mode. Make sure that you're playing full screen. This is the best way to play this game. Also for the resolution, make sure that you're native. In my case, it's 1440p. Don't downgrade your resolution over there. Your image quality will suffer too much. You should use an upscaler. So now let's go to the upscaler. If you have an RTX card, no brainer, go with DLSS for super resolution. Make sure that you're playing quality. You can expect 12 to 15% boost in your FPS. If you have a 2060, maybe try the balance one. You can expect like 18 to 20% boost in your FPS. And if you have like a really good computer and you want pure image quality, DLAA is the way to go, but you will not improve your FPS with this one. If your uh, video card, your RTX card is uh, the uh, 4th gen or more recent, if in the future, uh, definitely use the frame generation. It will provide you a nice 40% boost in your FPS. So this one is huge. I recommend to deactivate the automatic sharpness. Too much noise when you're playing the game. It's always like adapting. So I recommend to use a static one. It's a question of preference. It will not provide you FPS. So if your game is too blurry, go higher. If it's too detailed, go lower. Me, I like to play at 52. If you have a Radiant car, you have the FSR tree. So really cool feature over there. It's pretty much the same than DLSS for uh, my recommendation. Go with quality. And if you're struggling, you have a very old Radiant car, maybe try balance. But with quality, you can expect 10% boost in your FPS. And honestly, FSR tree is not on par with DLSS, but it's pretty near. And also you have the XESS from Intel. If you have like a GPU from Intel, you can definitely test this one. I know they have two different one, one that everybody can use and another one that dedicated for the Intel GPU. And the one that is dedicated, sometimes it's pretty much on par with DLSS. So definitely do your testing. I don't have an Intel uh, GPU. So let's go back to DLSS over there. After that, uh, I'm not using VSync. Question of preference, honestly, you're not playing Valorant. I, I don't like to use VSync because it adds a little bit of input lag in your game, but it's not a huge uh, issue for this game, honestly. Also, you can use G-Sync or FreeSync to synchronize your GPU with your monitor if you don't want those tiering line. Uh, if you have an NVIDIA card, definitely use the NVIDIA Reflex and deactivate your uh, variable rate shading. Uh, it's again, all those variable thing when you're playing a game, it's not very nice because you, it's always changing, you know, your visual. So you want something static. It's better for your experience. Anti-aliasing normally will be deactivate if you're using an upscaler. If you're using TSR, uh, the anti-aliasing will be activated. I recommend to go with low on a stat. Either game is very blurry and also you're going to increase your FPS. 
Post-processing, go with medium. You can expect a nice 3% boost over there versus high. And if you compare with low, it's just 1%. So it's a good balance to go with medium. Honestly, Hellblade 2, you're not playing Counter-Strike. So right now, the goal is to have a decent amount of FPS and a good image quality. But it really depends on your computer. So that's why I'm going to tell you how many FPS that you can gain. And after that, depending on your goal, you should definitely do some changes. Effect quality, I recommend to go with standard. This one, you're going to get like 2% increase. But it's more like it's going to stabilize a lot your FPS. So that's why I recommend to go with standard. If you're struggling with your FPS, Shadow Quality is pretty much the parameter with Volumetric that will provide you the most of your FPS. So high to low, you can expect 15% boost in your FPS. The game looks a little bit flat at low, so my recommendation is maybe start at medium and look at it. And if you're struggling, low definitely will help you a lot. After that, for the Reflection Quality, you have three uh, different um, brackets over there. 1% different between uh, low and medium, so that's why I recommend with medium. At high, you will tank your FPS, so a recommendation to go with medium. And it's pretty much the same thing with global illumination. Not a huge fan of low. The game looks very flat, so medium is a good balance between both. You can expect 3% over there. Volume matrix, if you compare high to low, you can expect 12%, but at low, the game looks very flat. So <laughs> this one is a tough one. You should start at medium, and if you're struggling, go with low. Uh, but it's pretty much the same thing than shadow. Uh, you don't want to go too low with this one. You want a nice experience. So my recommendation is start at medium. Texture quality, normally, if you have 6 gig and more of VRAM, you should be fine. Just look at your video memory over there. Uh, normally, you, you want 10% empty when you're playing a game to make sure that you don't have any stuttering. So just look at this. View distance, I recommend to go with medium. A low is a bit short, honestly, and uh, I will tank your FPS. So at medium, normally you will gain like 4 to 5% in your FPS. And foliage, go with medium, another 3% that you can uh, save over there. So this is pretty much it for Hellblade Dirt. I feel like the game is kind of well optimized. For sure, they're gonna push some patches after that, but... Uh, if you're uh, changing your graphic parameter well, you should be able to run this game easily, honestly, with the upscaling technique. So if you have any question, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.